Good afternoon. My name is Prakash Vafer, and I've been a meditator and a yogi for the past 50 years. And I'd like to speak today about the spiritual basis for activism and service that I've experienced over my lifetime. I'll begin by sharing a song or a hymn from the Vedas written over 7,000 years ago called Sangha Chadma, Let Us Move Together. Let us move together. Let us sing together. Let us come to know our minds together. Let us share like sages of the past that all people together may enjoy this universe. Unite our intentions. Let our hearts become inseparable. Our minds are as one mind as we to truly know one another, become one. And now I can see all of you. <clears throat> this chant that I was speaking the translation of in, in English was composed more than 7,000 years ago. And it's been also a song for collective meditation that I have practiced for the last 50 years. And I've been sharing it in public gatherings, dancing and speaking the words um, since my wedding in 1975. That's when the first time that I shared that. <clears throat> the founder of the spiritual path that I've been on for this last half century, P.R. Sarkar, gave a discourse around 1975 on this Vedic hymn, Sangha Chadwa, which you actually can see me behind me. Um, and he explained that just to represent the spirit of Sangha Chadlung, he gave the entire philosophy of PREPT, the progressive utilization theory. I'll speak about that more at another time, but let it suffice to say that this is an alternative to capitalism and communism that grows out of spirituality. And I'll be speaking about that and uh, sharing with you that inspiration. So the first line is, let us move together. Each and every living being, every entity in this universe moves. Movement is the essence of life. And, but not all movement is Sangha Chadma. Not all movement is moving together. Suppose you have sufficient food, housing, you know, and you've got all the, no shortages. You're doing well. You're fine. But what if your neighbors, your neighbors actually anywhere on this earth, are suffering from a lack of their basic necessities. They don't have enough to eat. They don't have proper housing or clothing or health care or education. In that case, we don't really have a society in the spirit of moving together. So the idea, according to PR Sarkar, is that moving together means building a strong, well-knit society where there's no exploitation no superiority or inferiority complex. And superiority and inferiority are really like two sides of the, I'm either better or I'm worse than others. You know, I'm better than everyone else or I'm, I'm no good. And those two are both great obstacles to our spiritual growth and our being able to create this feeling of a, being part of a, of a collective humanity on this planet. Let us sing together. What does that mean? Let our voices resonate with the spirit of moving together, guided by that spirit that animates all of us. You know, we're not so different. We're all in this together. It's really the essence of what many people say that that is their religion. You know, we're all in this together. Well, spirituality recognizes that fundamental truth that all living beings have a thirst, all human beings, in particular, have a thirst for limitlessness. What does that mean? We want to be happy, but how happy do we want to be? There's really no limit to that. And when we recognize that and recognize that that's not physical, material, it's actually a spiritual, then we're beginning to recognize that animating force in this universe. Um, let us come to know our minds together. From the perspective of yogis, everything in this universe 
everything this creation lies within the consciousness that is everything and everyone, the source of all life, of all existence. You know, this one mind stuff, you could call it, but also from the scientists who are studying particle physics, you know, uh, quantum physics, they recognize that, you know, the fundamental particles of the universe are common to all of us. We all have the same essence on that physical level, when we can, if we can see in the deepest level. Yogis recognize what the scientists have discovered. You know, there's that connection to all life, all beings are there. So understanding that the source of life is common to all of us. Diversity is really the law of nature, but unity is the essence of the fundamental connection between all life. Think of it like an ocean of consciousness and there's all these waves with that movement, but underneath those waves is one common ocean. If we can go deep or within, we recognize there's that animating force, that ocean that connects and ties us all together. Let us share like sages of the past that all people together may enjoy this universe. Well, all beings in this universe need air, light, water, respiration, nurturance, sustenance. This is common to all humanity. There's no differentiation here. Differentiation is caused by vested interests to divide us. We want to get ahead. We want to get more. We don't recognize that this thirst for limitlessness is fundamentally spiritual. We live in a finite world, but we have this infinite desire. But if we recognize that the consciousness is not finite, material world is finite, and we divert our attention and our focus towards that expansion of our consciousness, expansion of our hearts, then we understand how to unite our intentions and that our hearts become inseparable. And then ultimately, our minds are as one mind, as we to truly know one another become one. All isms, racisms, casteism, provincialism, nationalism, they're limited. The only ism that can unite, be the basis for truly human society is universalism. Much more than just we're all in this together, yet we're all coming from a place of a common consciousness, common loving essence. It's moving together and becoming one by overcoming all disparities and inequities and injustices. But the spirit of universalism is the essence of the spiritual basis for service and activism. Thank you.